Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on Bite of Geek. Today I'm going to be going through five things that you can do to your Synology DS920 Plus NAS to help speed it up. So let's check it out. So some of these items that I'm going to go through, you may be able to do those now. You may have already gone past the point of being able to implement some of these. Some of them are hardware related, some of them are software related. It really does uh, depend upon your particular circumstances. So just bear that in mind as I go through. First item on the list is hard drives and getting the right hard drive for your NAS unit. Now, it's also easy to you know, get your new NAS and wander off to somewhere like Amazon or something like that and go and buy four of a particular uh, you know, NAS specific hard drive. You know, if we take, for example, the Seagate Iron Wolf 4 terabyte drive, pretty decent drive. You know, most people will be more than happy with that. Uh, it's only 5900 RPM and has a okay-ish cache size for the size of the drive. Now, if you step up a level, if you go to something like the 8 terabyte drive then it's got 7200 rpm and has a considerably larger cache size so you know the difference here is approximately 20 percent performance difference between those two drives and you know something like this is really easy to kind of overlook and just think okay you know i'll go for the the cheapest option we're actually you know okay you know there is a, a considerable difference in price but the the performance difference that you'll have on these drivers is is as much as 20 percent so you know obviously you can go with other brands you can go with something like toshiba or something like that which are a little bit cheaper and are still as fast as those um seagate 7200 rpm drives so you know something really to bear in mind before you go and fill uh fill your nas unit and obviously be aware of this, you know, if certainly if you're buying a pre-configured NAS unit where the supply is already gone and installed, um, you know, the uh, four bays full of drives, a lot of these are pre-configured with uh, Seagate Iron Wolf uh, four terabyte drives. So you're probably not getting the best performance from the NAS out of the box. So item number two on the list is to do with the software settings now. Um, Synology's thought behind this setting is that rather than the system having to go to the disk all the time to go and get the information, they would rather kind of like compress it and store it in memory. Now that's all well and good and um, you know in theory it should work fine. Uh, however, obviously you know it uses some of that system memory. You've only got four gigabytes as standard on your system and some users have reported uh, kind of usage where it's it's kind of ramped up the CPU usage as well to almost 100% uh, Use more memory than probably it should be using so you, know, you, you need to go into the control panel and Into hardware and power and there's just an option there at the top just to um, well, On mine on DSM 7 it's it's ticked as enabling the compression so you can just untick that and then you just get a little confirmation dialog pop up about that and that's it really so probably give that a try out and see whether that adversely affects your performance uh, if it does i would turn that back on maybe it's it's absolutely fine on your system but uh, you know it's always the, the kind of like the general consensus is, is to turn this option off so the third item on the list and this is quite closely related to the second item and that is the amount of memory that is in your synology nas now um, by default out the box you've got that four gigabytes of ram and i think for you know for general use of the system that is probably more than enough you know if you're just copying files across every now and then but at some point in time you're going to want to do more with the nas um, you know you may well want to have kind of like vms running or something like that and they're all going to need more memory on that the more software you've got running on it uh, the more memory it's going to need and at the end of the day you know, you bought this NAS unit with this fancy uh, operating system and the ability to run all of these things, and you paid more for that than probably a bog standard NAS unit. Uh, so, you know, it seems strange to kind of like cripple the system with just the four gigabytes of RAM. Now, the DS920 Plus has a one additional DIMM slot uh, in, just inside 
the uh, the drive bays, as it were, it's just inside the, the front of the unit. A little bit tricky to get to. I'm sure they could have probably put this in a, a more convenient place, similar to where they put the SSD uh, cache uh, slots on the base of the unit. But nevertheless, that's where they put it. Um, so, you know, as a, as a kind of like a, a standard configuration, the system officially will support an additional four gigabytes of RAM. That's what I've got in my unit. You don't have to go and buy Synology branded RAM. I use a stick from uh, Crucial. Uh, however, there's plenty of reports out there where people have got um, you know, 12 gigabytes of RAM running all the way up to 20 gigabytes of RAM running in their system. One common thing that I've seen on a lot of those where they've gone a, a lot further, so all the way up to kind of like the 20 gigabyte, is that the um, highest uh, success rate has been with Samsung branded RAM. Um, that seems to be highly uh, compatible with the uh, Synology uh, NAS unit, so it's just something to bear in mind there. But obviously, you know, even with an extra four gigabytes, you will, you know, as you start to use the system more, uh, just like with Windows, you know, as an operating system, you will start to notice the benefit of that extra memory within the system. So the fourth item on the list is to do with the network ports on the back of the Synology NAS unit. Now, the DS920 Plus has two one gig Ethernet ports on the back, and uh, really, you know, most people will either have the uh, PC connected to a switch and then off to the NAS unit, and they'll just connect up to one port, or they'll have their PC connected to just one port by itself, and you'll be absolutely fine. You know, you've got one gig connection going to a one gig port. Now. If you've got more than one PC that's actually using this, then certainly if you've got um, a switch connected to your NAS unit, if you're only using one of those ports, then you are very much uh, effectively bandwidth throttled uh, between those two units. Now, you can go down the route of uh, paying out more for a fancy switch, which will allow you to do link aggregation. Um, but what you can actually do, you can do this within the software of DSM and it's really really simple and straightforward and just takes a couple of minutes to go through and that's basically to go and bond the two ethernet ports together so to get this working all you need to do is to go into your control panel in the dsm software and into network and there's an option there to uh, create a bond uh, on your ethernet ports and you just basically you just follow the defaults all the way through um, as I say, take a couple of minutes and basically what you'll end up with, instead of two individual uh, IP addresses for the Ethernet ports, you'll end up with one IP address that, that effectively covers both of those ports. So once you've done this, well, what is the effect that you'll get? Well, effectively what you've created is a two gig network port. Now, that doesn't mean to say, you know, your individual PC is going to be able to suddenly transfer at two gig across onto your NAS unit because it is still limited by the PC. However, if you've got your NAS connected to a switch and you've got multiple PCs uh, going through that switch, then your NAS will be able to, um, well, it, it basically just won't be as bottlenecked as it was before because now it's got double the bandwidth to be able to play with. So you'll actually see a faster throughput uh, of your network traffic to the NAS. So my fifth and final item on the list is populating the NVMe drive bays on the bo bottom of your DS920 Plus. So underneath your NAS unit on, on the base of it, you have two slots available and you can put in a couple of NVMe drives there. You can just put one in if you want to, but it is better to have two. Um, I have already done a video on this, so there's a link up above if you want to go and watch that as to the overall benefits of this. Um, so your mileage might vary with this option, um, but it is something, you know, if you, um, after watching that video, you think that is actually going to be beneficial to you, then I would definitely have that as the fifth thing that you should do to help in overall, you know, improve the performance of your NAS unit. So guys, that is my list of things to help you improve the performance of your Synology DS920 NAS unit. Now, some of those will work on other Synology NAS units and even other brands of NAS units. So you, know, you can always bear that in mind. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Uh, you know, is there something else that I've missed off that list that you think actually you know, that will 
um, be just as good or even better than what I've gone and suggested, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, but if you've enjoyed this video, then hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber already. But as always, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.